Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about lab safety. We're starting to work on our air-powered vehicles and we are going to be spending a good bit of our time in the materials lab which means we're going to be using some hand tools and some machines that we need to talk about in terms of lab safety. Uh, when we come back and we do our um, manufacturing activity for the uh, gumball machines we're going to actually talk about a few more machines and uh, go over some more safety at that time but right now we're going to go over the basics so what do we need to look at in lab safety first off the thing that we need to observe is that people do dumb stuff i have to admit i have done some dumb stuff when it comes to safety over the years i'm sure every you have as well so let's look at a few examples of some dumb stuff related to lab safety Here's a great example. Can you see what's wrong with this guy? He's doing some welding. He forgot to bring his safety mask along. So, in order to keep these hot sparks from hitting his face, he decided that he was going to, whoops, he decided that he was going to um, cut a piece of paper, cut out the eye holes, and pulled it over his face to keep the hot sparks off. Well, hopefully you're thinking ahead and realize that that spark could light that paper on fire. Let's look at another example. Here we got a couple of people on ladders. Um, yeah, this obviously looks a little unsafe with everything. Uh, quite a rigging here, and it's even a smaller ladder on top of a bigger ladder, just like this one. Small ladder on top of a big ladder. But hey, at least this person thought about safety. He's having someone hold the ladder for him. And how many times have we seen something like this going down the highway? I really hate to follow somebody with something like that going on. So, just to sum it all up, we do things a lot of times without really thinking them through. So, let's look back at our essential question for this unit. How do we solve specific technical design problems? We're going to add something to that. We're going to say, while doing it safely. So, let's look at a little bit of safety with all of this. Let's review our STEM. Remember that this unit has a STEM approach to it, a science, technology, engineering, and math. So let's just review that real quick again. Here's our science in this activity. Air-powered vehicles, we're going to talk about air pressure. We talked about the Bernoulli principle and the Venturi effect and how they affect air pressure. Our technology and engineering is we are going to be designing, drawing, and constructing a vehicle for testing. And the mathematics, you're going to have to do some calculations, some measurements to make your vehicle. You're going to measure some distances. You're going to be averaging those distances. So we have a little math involved with this activity. So that's the STEM. We're going to add another one for this activity. And we're going to call it DDDS. Quite simply, that just means don't do dumb stuff. Think it through over in the lab. Don't, I don't want to be yelling at you because you're putting yourself or others in danger. Um, if it looks like you're really just blatantly violating some safety rules, we can just have you go back over to the classroom and just stay out of the lab for a class period if it looks like we're going to be having some problems. So we don't want to do that. Everybody enjoys this activity. So let's just make sure we're doing things safely. Now, the ABCs of any lab. ABCs stand for always be careful. Very simply, straightforward put. Think through everything that you're going to do. Be aware of what's going on around you. Uh, make sure that that person behind you that's doing some chiseling with a hammer and a chisel on a piece of wood, if they slip, make sure that you're not in the path of where that chisel is going to go. If it looks like you see them doing something that looks potentially dangerous, get their attention. Stop them. You know, Correct them in what they're doing wrong. Always be aware of what's going on around you so you know what's going on. Think through the process you're about to perform and consider what should be done to be safe. If you're push pushing a piece of wood through the bandsaw and uh, you, know, you have hold of that piece of wood in such a way that if that block of wood were, were to slip, think about what direction your hand is going to go with the way that you're putting pressure on that piece of wood. If you were to slip, are your fingers going to go safely to either side of that blade or is your finger in line with that blade? And if you were to slip, is your finger going to hit that blade? Really think that through. We want to make sure that you're being safe all the time. So think through those safety operations and think ahead as to what you're trying to do. Above all else, no horseplay. Don't fool around in the lab. Don't distract others using machines or hand tools. I, I see it all the time. Your buddy is 
running the band so and you're going to go up behind him and you're going to get his attention or you're going to yell at him or you know give him a little nudge avoid doing that you could put somebody at, at grave danger by doing that so again no horseplay um, again be respectful we are in a professional environment you need to be in a safe environment so treat it as such let's talk about safety glasses safety glasses are the uh, the one thing that students a lot of times avoid wearing them they don't like them they don't feel comfortable uh, a pair of safety glasses on the top of your head are not protecting your eyes make sure they are down over your eyes you know they're not doing anybody any good if you leave them in the safety glass cabinet either so safety glasses always wear them when working or observing even if you're not doing anything you're just standing around the table watching some other people work put on the safety glasses things can fly we don't want to have a problem with you getting injured it's not my regulation it is actually a law you need to be wearing those safety glasses for some statistics about two and a half million eye injuries occur in the United States every year. That's a high number. Uh, about 2,500 of those per day from workplace accidents. So every day in a workplace, people are receiving eye injuries 2,500 times per day. Major, minor injuries, even that little speck of dust, that all adds up into a potential you know, a, a statistic. Over 60% of those workers injured were not wearing safety glasses at the time of the accident. So more than half were not wearing glasses that probably could have avoided an accident. So bottom line, make sure you are always wearing those safety glasses. Next thing we want to talk about, use the correct tool for the job. You want to make sure that you use the tool for the jobs that they were intended for only. I got that picture of a broken hammer in there. Obviously, it was probably being used for something other than pulling a nail. Um, screwdrivers are the biggest thing that people misuse for things. Uh, yeah, we pick up a screwdriver a lot of times to pop open a paint can. You're not probably going to damage the screwdriver, but there are tools that are specifically made for that work. So make sure you're using the correct tool for the job. A wood chisel is meant for chiseling wood, not for prying nails out of a tabletop. It's dangerous, plus you also damage the tool. Check the condition of the tool. If something is wrong, let me know. Again, that chisel that somebody was trying to pry a nail out with is probably all chipped up, which means it's probably not going to work very well for chiseling out a piece of wood. If you see something wrong with a tool, let me know right away so I can correct it or replace it. Dull tools are much more dangerous than sharp tools. You think, well, why could that be? If it's sharp, it's going to cut me better or cut me easier. But think about this a dull tool that chisel that somebody abused that's you know that chisel that's dull you're going to have to put a lot more force on that thing to try to make it cut and when you're putting more force on something you have less control over it so you have less control of where it's going to go so if it slips it's going to probably be a little bit more dangerous so dull tools because you have to work harder make them more dangerous than sharp tools Know the rules of operation. Only use machines and tools that you are comfortable with and know the rules of operation. We will go over the safety regulations and safe practices of every machine that we need to use for this activity and you will be safety quizzed on each of those machines in order to be able to use it. When you take your safety quiz, it's very common sense. Most people can score 100% the first time they take it, but if you do not, you will take the quiz as many times as you need to reach 100%. So we will go over the safe rules of operation and take a nice state standardized safety quiz on every machine. And there's the message that I just mentioned. You must pass a safety quiz for each machine before you can use it. Appropriate clothing in the lab. Now, back in my day of high school, if you did not show up in appropriate clothing, um, did not have a good sturdy pair of shoes on, you didn't work. Well we need to watch what we're wearing and limit what you are doing if you are really not in a dressed appropriately for the lab so i'm asking that when we are in the lab are in the lab please leave the sandals and flip-flops home and wear appropriate closed shoes a good solid pair of sneakers is a lot better than an open-toed pair of shoes because if you drop a chisel 
you know, those sneakers are probably going to stop that chisel a lot better than, well, nothing at all, sand or flip flops. No loose clothing around machines. Long hair should be pulled back. The reason being for both of those articles is that long hair could get stuck in the machine and get wrapped up in it. Here's a good example of that. Here's a piece of clothing wrapped around a shaft. Okay, long hair could get wrapped up around a drill press while you're using it. So pull back the long hair. And again, loose clothing, make sure you push up the sleeves. Take care of all of those things. Keep your work area clean. Sawdust and dirt can make the floor slippery and unsafe and we make a lot of sawdust over there. So keep tables and machine clean as well. Put tools away when not in use. Your mother doesn't work in the lab, so clean up after yourself. You know, you need to make sure that your area is clean and what we touch, we clean up. So the last five minutes of every class period, we will stop working, we will put everything away, and we will make sure that the room is clean before you leave. So if it doesn't seem like it's happening, we will make that cleanup time a little longer. So again, make sure everything is cleaned up and put away when you're done. And again, no horse play in the lab it can cause a very dangerous situation. And that's about it for our lab discussion. We will talk about individual machines in the lab and take your safety quizzes. Have a good day.